Hey everybody, I'm George Connolly from Scratch Golf Tips. Today we're going to be talking about scorekeeping during a round and how to analyze those stats to improve your golf long term after the round. This is something that is so, so important for many golfers and it's often overlooked by many amateurs, overlooked by people who are shooting high scores and looking to get a little bit lower. So this is a video that's gonna help you out a lot and if you want to make any imminent changes to your golf swing, this is not technical at all. It's just looking at your stats and collecting them properly throughout a round. Now, before I get into my book and how I score my rounds and analyze my rounds after, let's talk about the importance of understanding your stats in your golf game. A few months ago, I had PGA teaching pro Keith Bennett on the podcast. If you want to listen to the full episode, it is in the card above. But basically towards the end of that episode, Keith said, any business that wants to be successful needs to understand its numbers. It doesn't just need to understand profit. It needs to understand revenue, expenses, overhead, accounts payable. All of those little things need to go into analyzing a business and making it more successful. And it's no different for your golf game. In your golf game, you can't just say, I shot an 84 today and that's it. You need to understand the greens and reg you hit, how many putts you hit, your proximity to hole. All of these things are so important. So let's get into my book and see how we can measure that during a round. I was gifted this leather book a little while ago. I believe you can get them on Amazon and a bunch of other places. I love having this in my back pocket. It's great. Um, I'll link one down below on Amazon if you're interested in purchasing it. The only downside to this is sometimes uh, if I'm playing a new course that I don't know, obviously these pages are the same, so it won't give you the yardages for each hole and whatnot. But um, if you're playing on the same course often, these are great. And sometimes if I'm playing a new course, I'll still use this. I'll just have the scorecard for that course in my cart with me. So this is what a round would look like normally. Uh, this was from a few months ago, probably closer to six months ago, honestly. I shot a 78, I went out in 38, and I went in in 40 to shoot a uh, seven over 78. So here are the things I measured throughout that round. The first thing I measure in this top row is the club that I selected off the tee. This is really important for me to know because there's usually a pretty direct correlation between the fairways I hit and the clubs I go with off the tee. If I play really aggressive, and on this course there are 14 par fours and fives, if I'm using a driver on 13 of those 14 holes, then I'm gonna have a pretty tough time hitting a lot of fairways. But in this instance, I actually did not hit many fairways. I hit one, two, three, four, five fairways, which is not very good. And I hit a lot of drivers and a few three woods. So that tells me that the driver and three wood, although they're getting out there long, I may not be finding the short grass. Now I'm going through each hole and seeing driver hit fairway, driver miss the left, three wood miss left. And a pattern I see is I hit a three iron off the tee only two times and I hit the fairway both times. But I only hit my driver on the fairway two out of six times. So obviously there's a direct relationship there that you might be able to guess if you don't tick your stats, but you can really understand it better if it's plain in front of you in writing. Now, when you're recording your fairway statistics, it's important not to only check if you hit it and X out if you miss it, but if you miss it, you wanna elaborate on what the miss was. I write down an L for left and an R for right and then I do an S for short or a D for deep. That way you can pick up on some consistencies and see some patterns. Say you hit 75% of your fairways with a three wood, but every time you miss it, you miss it left. Then you step up to a par four that's a little bit short, but there's water left. You might wanna go with a driver or a three iron based on that information you know from writing down your statistics. So I always record the club I use off the tee and I also record the club I use for my approach shots. So for hole one, I know that I use driver and then I use the 58 degree wedge. Hole two, I use a driver and then I use an eight iron. But then you can see further on, I use a three iron and then I had a nine iron in. So understanding what clubs off the tee will put what clubs in your hand for the approach shot is also very important. Just like there can be a correlation between the club you use off the tee and your fairways hit, there's also a correlation that may be found between your approach shot club selection and your amount of greens and regulation hit. I can go through here and see that most times I had a 58 degree wedge in my hand, I would hit the green in regulation. In this round, I didn't hit many greens. I hit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven out of 18 greens, which isn't very good. But the times I missed the greens, I had a seven iron in, an eight iron in, an eight iron in. But most times I had a 58, a 52, or a pitching wedge, I'm hitting the greens. Now this may seem like pretty obvious stuff, but you may see some trends that are unusual and that kind of depart away from the normal. Say you don't have any confidence with a nine iron, but you have confidence with your eight and seven iron. You can see that correlation there like, hey, I put a nine iron in my hand four times last round and I didn't hit a single green in reg. 
understand that information and then play away from a nine iron. If a three wood off the tee gets you to a nine iron, then don't use the three wood off the tee. You can either go for a driver, try and hit that fairway, maybe hit a 52 degree wedge, 54, whatever you have in the bag, or you can club down for a driving iron and put a seven or eight iron in your hands if you like that better and you have more confidence than a nine iron. So other than those big four and obviously your score, there are three more things that I write down on my scorecard that are very important. The first being sand shots, the second being chips, and the third being putts. For sand shots, there are two ways that I can record it. On the left side of the box, if I put a one or two down, that means I'm hitting out of a fairway bunker, fairway sand. And if I put it on the right side of the box, that means I'm hitting out of a green side bunker. A lot of people overlook sand shots entirely, but say you have a really poor round of golf, but you felt like you struck the ball well, well then go through, see how many sand shots you hit. And if you're a weak bunker player, you can see that correlation saying, hey, I, I made a bunch of pars today, but I made a bunch of double bogeys. Why did those double bogeys happen? Well, I used this club off the tee, I found myself in these fairway bunkers, and that's why it blew up. Next thing I write down is chips, which is pretty self-explanatory. Hopefully, if you do have to chip, you can only chip once, but there's obviously a correlation between the club you have in hand for your approach shot and the lack of greens and regulation. There's a correlation between those two and the amount of chips you'll have. And finally, I write down the amount of putts. If you don't take anything else out of this video, write down the putts that you hit throughout a round. A question that I've been asked a few times before is what should I mark down if I'm putting from off the green and that is a good question by the rules of golf I know on the PGA Tour if a player putts from the fringe or off the fairway that does not count as a putt for their round what I do for my own scorecard is say I'm putting from off the green I one putt to five feet and then I make that putt I'll write down a one and then I'll do a little star next to it knowing that I putt once from off the green you'd be really surprised to see the fluctuation in how many putts you hit during a round I know that I've had a few rounds where I've hit 28 putts and I felt like I putted horribly and I've hit 32 putts and I felt like, hey, that was a pretty solid putting round. There's a reason for this. I know that in my own game, sometimes I won't be striking the ball well, so I'll miss a lot of greens and then I'll just chip close and make a lot of one putts from there. Now, the fact is if I do that, I'm saving par and I would make par just the same if I hit a good tee shot, a good iron shot, and I two putted on the green. Same score of a four on a par four, but it's one putt versus two putt. So you can see those variabilities and you can notice those patterns. And that's what's so essential to understanding your game. And that understanding of the game can lead you to improving it. Obviously, if you just keep all of these numbers in for one round, you're not going to be able to understand everything about your golf game. But you know, I've played for a little bit with this book and I have dozens and dozens of rounds in here. So I can go through these and I can understand what I'm doing. I can understand the clubs I'm hitting, what I'm confident in, where my short game is at. And one of the most beneficial things about this is if you're a member at a course or you play one course really, really often, now you have all of the club selections you have. So I can go through and say, hey, I hit a driver on the first tee and I hit the fairway 60% of the time. And then I hit a three wood and I hit the fairway 80% of the time. Going through that is huge for understanding your course management on your home course. So using your scorecard to your benefit and then taking that information after a round and understanding it is so important. Once again, if you want to get a book like this, you can click the link down in the description. It'll probably send you to Amazon. Uh, but another thing you can do is this is just a normal scorecard. Uh, you'll notice on many scorecards, there's a bunch of lines. Uh, there's usually eight or seven lines. Uh, if you're, unless you're playing with seven people, you have a bunch of open lines. So here I had my score to par, my score, fairways hit, greens and reg, putts, chips, sand shots, just all on this. So if you don't wanna get the journal and you're just playing with a scorecard, you can still write down all this information just the same. I hope you guys took something out of this video. If you have any questions on what I've gone over or if you think I missed anything, comment them down below. I respond to all comments on this page, at least comments that warrant a response. If you want to contact me directly, you can send a direct message to any of the Scratch Golf Tips social media platforms. Direct messages are open there and I check those pretty regularly. You can also email me personally at scratchgolftips at mail.com. If you like the apparel that I wear in these videos, I wear John Morgan Sportswear. They are a proud partner of Scratch Golf Tips and any purchases made through the link in the description help support the Scratch Golf Tips brand. Thank you very much for watching everybody. Play well and take care.